Hi, welcome back to From Book to Business. I am best-selling author and author coach, Trina Boyce. Thank you for subscribing, hint, hint, nudge, nudge, and for joining me today with my special guest, whose name is Danella Burnett. Welcome, Danella. Thank you, Trina, for having me here today. I'm so excited to Hi. talk to you. Yeah, well, I am so excited to have you talk to me and my audience. So everybody who's watching, I invited Danella because she is an expert on getting speaking gigs. So I know you're probably an author, a writer, an editor, publisher, singer, musician, or other creative, which is amazing. And I admire those talents so much. But we need to get you out doing speaking events. So Danella's here to answer all of our questions, solve all of our speaking problems. <laughs> Excellent. Well, at, at least as many speaking problems as we can handle at <laughs> one time. You know, it's a really big subject. But, um, you know, I really do want to make this super, super valuable for your authors and creatives. And, and, you know, I love working with authors and creatives because they have a voice. But they often like put their voice out there in whatever their artistic genre is. And they don't realize that that same voice is a voice of authority that should be on a stage and sharing their message. And it's just a small little leap to going from, you know, the book on the shelf to the book that's on everybody's shelf or being seen and really being heard. So, I'm really excited to have this conversation because we need more creatives. We need more positivity. We need more voices in the world today. What's interesting is as an author coach, I work with very shy people oftentimes. Mm -hmm. They're passionate about their writing, but they are often introverts. And they just the thought of standing up in front of a stage and speaking terrifies them. So what advice would you have for shy authors? Well, the cool thing about speaking is, you know, often for that person, what comes to mind is, you know, some big, huge stage and all the lights and, you know, thousands and a sea of people in front of them. And, you know, and that can be daunting even for an accomplished speaker. But speaking really, it, it can be as intimate as this. I mean, what we're doing right now is speaking today. You know, speaking is in the virtual world as well as in the in-person world. And, you know, we'll touch on that in just a minute, kind of what's going on in the world today. But, you know, speaking can be a relatively intimate workshop. It can be part of that book signing or that, that book tour. It could be speaking, uh, you know, somebody else's workshop. But I mean, it could be as few as 10 to 50 people or it could be in front of thousands and you know but the cool thing is is the one with the microphone is the one that's heard in that moment and so getting in front of people you know and getting their attention and having that microphone that's when you're going to get heard I know oftentimes authors say, oh, I don't want to be salesy. Of course, they want people to buy their books, but they're like, I don't want to be that person on the stage saying, buy my book, you know? So how do you recommend presenting your information without being kind of icky, sleazy, salesy? Well, there's lots of options depending on certainly the nature of the book. You know, if, if the book is one that easily uh, could be made into a workbook and could be part of a workshop or a training. You know, if you have something that's of value to other people, offering it to them and accepting money in exchange for that, I mean, that's a value exchange. That's, you know, the word sales does get such a bad rap sometimes. But, you know, if you're providing value to somebody and they're giving you an equal value in return, you know, that happens to be money, you know, that's not a bad thing. That's a really good thing to offer things that can be of value to other people. So, you know, and, and even if it's not something that necessarily helps them or helps them make money or become a better person, it's, you know, for your authors that are writing a book that just transports somebody to another world, you know, or has value. good or a great story. Yeah. You know, you deserve to get paid for that and people will buy that. So 
they just want to see what it is that you have to offer. They want to know, you know, we, we don't really buy things. We still buy from people. So when you can be on the stage and you can share a little bit about who you are and why what you wrote is important, why what you shared with the world is important, that's what people want to buy. That's what people want to connect to. I think that's really true. People want to get to know the authors. That's kind of a cool thing. And for those authors who write nonfiction, they have the ability or even the duty, maybe that's being dramatic, but to share information. You know, fiction writers are sharing the, the escape from reality, which is very valuable in <laughs> today's setting where our world is kind of crazy right now. Right. Um, and then those who write nonfiction have knowledge to share. And so they're serving an audience and offering that information, which is a value exchange. So, yep. And speaking is just the best way. I mean, if you are looking to grow your business, to get your products out there, to get your books out there, uh, turn your books into workbooks, turn your workbooks into programs, turn your programs into coaching. I mean, all of that is a pathway to a business and profit, and it all centers around speaking. That's so true. So we just mentioned the crazy world. And so talk to us about that because some of my authors or clients actually have speaking gigs that were canceled because of our forced isolation, social distancing, and all of that because of COVID-19. And so now they're scrambling and maybe they haven't done virtual summits, tele-summits, webinars, and that kind of stuff. So tell us well, tell us everything about that that you think that, that we need to know and why they should include virtual speaking opportunities. Well, I, I will say my passion has always been the live event space. I am a believer in, you know, the proximity rule that, you know, when you and I are together in the same space, it's like good food and good wine is more, you know, one plus one equals more than two. I think that's the same when we're in proximity together and, and live events, you know, is the embodiment of that in business. You know, you bring people together and it's just magic happens there. Joint ventures happen. People get creative. Did you, you say learn. drunk ventures? Joint ventures. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's it, some live events, you know, there, there are drunk adventures, but joint ventures, you know, when, yeah. when, uh, you know, we have something and we can work together in partnerships and, you know, uh, you have this amazing book and my audience would like that as well. You know, let's do something together. You know, those things just tend to happen very much in that, in, you know, in together space. But we are in the middle of this period of quarantine and isolation and social distancing. And about a month ago, we're about four weeks in now, about a month ago, I mean, live events were just firmly put in timeout. And I do believe that it is for, you know, a limited period of time. I mean, it may be quite some time before we see big, huge stadium tours and concerts and, you know, huge, huge events, but live events where people are working together and workshops and, and live, you know, events for sales and fulfillment and coaching and programs, they're going to be back. I think Q3 you know, we're going to start to see in the next couple of months, these events come back. Um, but what we've had to do in the last month is very quickly move to virtual. And there's actually been some really good things that have happened from virtual. You know, I didn't do a whole lot in the virtual space. I did interviews and I did things like this and certainly used Zoom, but my preference was always live. But now that that's not been an option, We've really, we've pivoted some events, some live events and, and making them virtual. We have a big event coming up in a couple of weeks with a very well-known author and speaker, Les Brown. He is our keynote for the day. Um, and we've turned that live event into a virtual event. And so we've got music, we've got networking, we've got a lot of the elements that you would have in a live event. We're bringing to the virtual space so that our speakers who were already set to be on that, you know, big stage, we were planning on 1,000 to 1,500 people, you know, they're still going to get value and get to share their message. 
um, we're still going to get to share Les Brown with, you know, with, with the world that day and his phenomenal message. Um, and so virtual events have taken on some new personality and it's made it really accessible and really affordable for people to get out and get their message out there because there's a lot of free opportunities to speak, to be interviewed, to get on podcasts. Um, there's some sponsorship opportunities, you know, that you may want to tap into, but there's a lot of really good stuff going on in the virtual space now um, that are doing the job, you know, until we can get back to live events. In fact, I think there are even more opportunities because people who might normally want to attend that event, that big event, let's say, out of state, now don't have to afford airplane, hotel, you know, all of the travel expenses and food expenses. They can just enjoy it from the convenience of their home. And the venue or the event online is now available to anybody in the world. Exactly. I'm always amazed at my viewers, for example, on YouTube or my, my readers who read my books uh, coming from India or Russia or, you know, Australia or wherever around the world where normally I wouldn't be exposed to them in a personal event unless I went to them. So I think yeah. there are a lot of great opportunities with virtual. Yeah. And a lot of our speakers who do speaker sponsorships where, you know, they're happy to pay for a stage to be in front of their perfect audience or they're getting on that stage and they have the opportunity to get an immediate return on investment by, you know, selling something from the stage or selling something from a booth in the back of the room. You know, obviously when you are making that time and money commitment to travel, airline, hotel, you know, you are going to be a little bit more discerning about, is that the right place for me? Is that where I want to spend my time? But if you could do it virtually, you know, we just were working with uh, one of our clients this week. She is speaking effectively in South Africa, the Far East, and in the States this week. Wow. You know, she could never do that right. live and in person. You know, the travel would just kill somebody, right. you know, to do that. But because she's been out traveling and, and talking to different groups around the world, she was able to schedule all of that within this week and speak to some different groups and network with some new people. So, you know, there is, there has been some really good things coming out of the uh, virtual space right now that we're excited about. So the question on everybody's mind is, how do you get these speaking gigs, whether they're in person or online? How do you do that? So a couple of things, you know, and I, and I may do virtual and live and, and, you know, kind of cross back and forth, you know, really the same steps and the same ideas work for both. Um, you want to be really, really clear in who you want to talk to, you know, and focus on those, the people who are already talking to your audience. You want to talk with them, you know, like you and I are doing right now, you know, in the virtual space. You could connect to somebody who um, is already speaking to your audience and you can see if you can interview them or they can interview you. Uh, look for podcasts that are for your target audience. Um, you know, Google is a, a machine when it comes to finding opportunities, you know, and, and we tell people, you know, use a few keywords like, I want to speak to women. I want to speak to women, you know, in Anchorage, Alaska, and about women's empowerment. You know, you could put exactly what you're looking to do into the Google search bar, and you're going to find live events that come up, or you could change some of those words. I want a podcast for women and empowerment. You're going to get a list of podcasts that come up. So Google can be a great asset in finding speaking opportunities, can also be a great place to kind of go down a lot of rabbit trails. Um, so you want to, you know, have a focus and probably have a set amount of time when you're researching in that way. Um, you can subscribe to memberships, such as our membership, where we provide speaking leads to our members among some other Yes, and down below, you're going to see a link if you want to learn more about her membership. Well, go ahead and tell us right now while, you're, while we're talking about it. 
So we provide speaking leads as well as some other resources and community for our speakers. And there are certainly other lead sources out there as well. So instead of doing the research yourself, you can purchase those leads as they apply to you and the audience that you want to get in front of. And so that's kind of the second thing that you can do and follow up with those leads. Um, if you follow somebody who's an expert in your industry, and they're kind of speaking about the same things that you speak on, follow that person, see where they're speaking, see what kind of, op see what podcasts they're on. That may be a great opportunity for you to follow up on as well. So there's lots of speaking opportunities out there. Um, and then once you've kind of narrowed down, this is where I want to speak, you want to follow um, and apply for those speaking opportunities. Um, by looking on their website, seeing if there's a speaking application, you want to email that host, find out about that opportunity, pick up the phone, you know, like anything else, you know, you're, you're, you're interviewing and you're looking for an opportunity. So you want to do the work to follow up. You made an excellent point about how I think years ago, we looked at people who did the same thing in the same genre or industry as competition like they were the enemy but i think that's really changed you mentioned collaborating with people who are in your same industry mm -hmm. and following them becoming friends with them doing stuff together in joint ventures i love that there's so much more of a collaborative feeling in in the environment not only virtually but in the real world too nowadays yeah, in fact, one of the things that's come out of this, you know, time period with the coronavirus is, you know, I've been an event planner and event producer for 25 years. Um, and again, for a long time, you know, you just would never play with other event planners, but the environment is very, very different. Um, there's actually six of us. We're all national event planners. Much of what we do is the same, but then we each have a little bit of a different spin on the way we do things. And a, a little different, you know, twist to what we do. We've actually banded together and created a Event Experts United, a resource group um, where we're talking about events and what's going on. And, and we each have a little bit of our specialty. So, you know, mine is the speaking in the live events and, and using sponsorships and speaking um, to grow your business. Um, but, you know, we all talk about event planning and hosting profitable and impactful live events, but we can all shine in what we do that's special. But when I'm looking for speaking opportunities, you know, if you're a, an event or if you're a, a host and you have one of my, you know, competitors on your platform, it's probably because it's beneficial for your audience. So you may want to have me on to share with your audience in the future. So. You know, as you're doing your research, definitely following those that, you know, are similar to you and, and have a same audience is where you want to put your effort. So if somebody is researching, let's say they want to speak at a particular company, should they look for that company's event planner, event coordinator, or what titles would you be looking for to contact? Specifically. It might be the person in human resources. It might be the person in marketing. It really kind of depends on what area of, you know, corporation or, you know, when you get into the corporate speaking. Um, if it is, if your message is more for universities or associations, you know, you might look for words like outreach or education, the human resource person, the marketing person. Okay, good tips. And then talk to us about media kits and what it is and how it's important and what you do with it. Yeah, when you fill out speaking applications online, you know, the, the busy event planner, you know, it's their job to find the speakers for that event. And this is true whether they are paying for a speaker to come in and and give a particular value to the audience that's there and it's worth it to them to write a check for that or it's continuing education or it's on the other side and they're filling speaking opportunities for a conference that um, they're not paying for it's more of an opportunity for the speaker um, either way they have a limited amount of time 
to figure out who's a good fit for that spot. So a media kit or a speaker's kit or a speaker's one sheet, you'll hear all of those referred to, um, is really your opportunity to show very, very quickly to that event planner, this is what I am, this is what I talk about, this is the value I bring to the table, and this is why you should consider me. So it's a resume of sorts, a little bit more exciting than a resume and, you know, two, two pages of, of typed, you know, letter. But, uh, you know, it would have a picture of you. It would have in very, very in sound bites what you're talking about, the value that you bring to your being on this stage and speaking. So oftentimes speakers will have maybe a tab or a page on their website mm -hmm. and it might include video reels, for example. What mm -hmm. are some of the things that get the coordinators, these event coordinators excited if they go to a website and see? So if they go to a website, they're looking for a video or something that's going to get their attention very quickly. You know, it, they say that as a society now, you know, we have the attention span of a goldfish. I will tell you a busy event planner, we have even less time than that. <laughs> you know, so we're looking for, you know, if you are directing us to a video, that video should be impactful. It should very, very quickly, you know, we want to see you. So we don't want to see a long, drawn out introduction of you. We don't want to see a, an event host from an event a year ago, you know, get going through your whole bio. We want to go right to you. We want to see you on the stage. We want to see your personality. We want to just see, are you going to be a good fit? And, you know, we don't need the whole, your whole message in that. We just want to get that vibe of whether or not you're gonna be a good fit, whether the way you speak is gonna be interesting to our audience. Um, you know, are you somebody who is more exciting and flamboyant and a little wilder and crazy and personality plus on the platform? Or are you, you know, a little bit more educational? You know, they're both excellent. It just depends on what spot is looking to be filled. So how long should the video be? What do you recommend? Those videos should be no more than two minutes. Okay. It may go on longer than that, but your good stuff better be in the first two minutes. Okay, good. That's a really good tip. <laughs> <laughs> what are some of, well, what are some of the mistakes that people make when they want to approach a venue or an event coordinator and try to get one of these gigs? Well, I will say this. Nobody likes a selfish speaker. So it's a very fine line between being about you because you're the one who, you know, you're pitching, you're sharing yourself and being all about you. So you want to cross that, that line between sharing and being authentic, but showing, make it about the audience, make it about the value you're bringing to the table instead of, I'm so great, <laughs> flip that to a great thing for your audience is. And just that little bit of a change in kind of the way you think about it, because nobody likes, nobody really wants to be, you know, the event planners don't want to be sold to either, but they do want to see what's the value if I bring this person to the platform, you know, what am I going to get as the, the event host and the planner you know, is this going to be somebody that's easy to work with? Is this going to be somebody that is going to follow our instructions? Um, you know, and if you're asked to provide something, you know, your headshot and your bio and all those things, follow it to the T. You know, don't send 50 pictures if they ask for one. You know, follow, follow the instructions and do that quickly because they're busy. So they want to know that they're going to work with somebody that's good and easy to work with. And more importantly, they want to know that it's going to bring incredible value to the audience. So one question I get asked often is, how do I choose my price? How do I know how much to charge? Or do I pay for the speaking opportunity? So what do you counsel people? It's really two different pathways. And, and one is the keynote pathway where the product really is the talk. That's what you're selling. You're getting paid to get on the stage and deliver 
some education, some motivation, some inspiration, your story, your system, and you're really being hired by them in order to share that information. So that's a keynote. Now, normally a keynote, you're getting paid for the talk, so you often will not have an opportunity. You know, that's not the best fit if you're looking to get new clients or sell your programs. You may sell your books that might be part of the package that you're offering that day, um, and it may be beneficial for that event for their audience to have your book. Maybe that's part of what you're talking about. Um, but if you're looking to really sell yourself as a coach or a program that you're looking to fill, a keynote may not be the best opportunity because you typically can't sell at that opportunity or collect the audience's information. The other side is free or sponsored opportunities where maybe there's no exchange of money, but it's a free opportunity for you to speak and you're bringing some value to the platform. And in exchange for that, you get to collect the audience's information or offer a free product, offer a strategy session, um, invite them to meet you at a booth in the back of the room. You know, that's where the exchange of value is. Or we have speakers that pay for the opportunity to be on the stage because they know their perfect audience is there. They know they get to collect leads and they can follow up and make sales, or they get to actually sell from the stage and you know invite people to the back of the room and fill out an order form and make money there. So for somebody who's just starting, how do they know what is an appropriate fee? Can they find that kind of stuff online? Do you have that information in your membership, for example? Well, we go through that in strategy because it really is different depending on what niche they're in. You know, if they are looking for keynotes, um, it's directly proportionate to the value they're bringing to the audience and what the value that is to the company that's writing the check. You know, in some information, you know, a friend of mine likes to say, you know, all truth is valuable but some truths are more valuable than others. <laughs> so if what you have to share is, is great information and maybe it's motivational or inspirational, you know, that may have a lower value than information that makes salespeople go out there and generate 50% more in sales. So it really can depend on what you're bringing to the marketplace. Um, you know, a brand new speaker you know, I will say that keynotes have gone down a little bit um, with the popularity of speaking. Um, but, you know, a good keynote that provides value, you know, it could be anywhere from $500 to $5,000 for a keynote. Um, somebody who's been doing it for a long time, very professional, has all those things in place, the, the media kit, has some experience and can show results. From their speaking, you know, it can certainly go up 5,000, 10,000 or more. So what topics do you think are the big hot topics nowadays? Uh, leadership is always a hot topic. I mean, everyone is always looking for, you know, and we're in the keynote side here, you know, on the keynote side, leadership, um, emotional maturity and emotional um, well-being is definitely a hot topic, uh, emotional maturity, um, wellness, um, and wellness might be weight loss, it might be mindset, you know, wellness, you know, as a nation, we're obsessed with wellness, you know, sometimes we should be more obsessed with it, or we should just be putting to practice, you know, the things that we're learning. Um, but wellness, um, a lot of corporations are adding wellness programs. And so they're looking for people, you know, who can come in and and show their staff and their employees, you know, and it's proven that those that have a wellness program or, you know, can encourage their employees that there's a financial benefit to that. There's fewer people who call out, there's fewer people, you know, that turn over. So, you know, there's a lot of things that even though it might not be about making money, it could be very valuable to a corporation or association and they make money by bringing somebody in. So, 
I would say those are some of the, the big hot topics right now. And of course, you know, ways to go virtual, technology, how to use technology. You've got a lot of companies now that are not used to working virtually, you know, so that could be very beneficial to teach companies how to work with virtual employees or at home employees. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about the sponsorship scenario and why someone would be willing to pay and how profitable that really could be. Love to talk about that because at first, speakers are sometimes like, why would I pay to be on the stage? Like they should pay me. And again, we've talked about the keynote, we've talked about the value of that, and that is the right pathway for some speakers. For others though, when you have books, programs, coaching, products to sell, it actually can be much more lucrative and a much faster path to making money to pay for opportunities. And I'll, I'll give a couple of examples. One of my first opportunities that I paid for, um, I paid $1,000 to be a sponsor and to be a speaker, and we were sharing our membership. And I paid $1,000 and our membership is very affordable. It's $99 a year, you know, $9.97 for the, for the whole year. And so just one sale would cover that opportunity. Well, I shared, it was not a very big group. It was a women's group. There were only 30 people in the room, but we talked about speaking much like we did here. You know, I invited the speakers to come back and talk, you know, meet me at my table because I'd had the opportunity to speak in the front of the room seen as an expert. They came, we talked. I sold five memberships that day. Wow. You know, very, very easy return on investment. But I'll give you a big example. <laughs> we have one of our clients, I um, mean, he's been speaking for many, many years, very skilled at selling from the stage, will typically sell about 20%. If he's in the right room with the right audience, typically about 20% of the people in the room will take advantage of his offer. And um, he, it's virtual assisting and very beneficial to entrepreneurs and, and uh, in many industries. Well, recently, a room of a thousand people paid $10,000 to speak, spoke for 90 minutes, showed the value of you know, what he does and how he helps people. 20% of a thousand people is 200 people. 180 people that day took advantage of that offer. Wow. 180 people times a thousand dollars, it's a hundred and eighty thousand dollars. Ten thousand dollars to speak on that stage and a hundred and eighty thousand dollars in sales, well worth it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I can do that math. <laughs> yeah, you do need to know, you know, what your numbers are and you need to have the right strategy, you know, and whether you go the keynote route or you go the, the selling from the stage route or lead generation, which is kind of right in the center. More importantly, you need to have the right strategy for that pathway. You have the right elements in place beforehand. You have the right elements in place when you're at the stage and when you're at that event, whether it's virtual or whether it's live, and then you have the right follow-up for that particular pathway. So that's something we really go through with our speakers because, you know, they're all great opportunities and great ways to grow your business. But, you know, if you don't have all the elements that you need, you may be leaving money on the table or you may be leaving impact on the table. Because it's not always about making money. Sometimes it's about awareness or sharing a message. So whether your goal is impact or profit, you still just need to have the right elements in place and have the right speaking strategy. Are there certain products that do better in a sponsorship type of situation? For example, books versus uh, membership versus actual products, people walk away with physical products, or does it just depend on the audience and the stage? It really depends on the audience. I mean, they can all do incredibly well if you're in the right place and you've positioned yourself well and, you know, you speak as the expert and you're offering something of value 
people will take advantage of what you offer them. If you're in the wrong place, <laughs> wrong audience, you know, you can you can have, you know, the the best there is out there, but if they're not interested in what you're offering, you know, you're not going to see those results. So discernment to be in the right place, um, getting some assistance and in, in that clarity and making sure that you're using your time and your resources wisely to be speaking in the right in front of the right audience is important. And then knowing what you're offering. Awesome. So now if somebody's interested in a sponsorship type of a situation, would you advise them to do the same research on Google? Just replace the word sponsor speaking event or how would they search for those types of opportunities? Well, you might instead of um, it, the words that you're going to use if you want to get paid to speak are going to be things like conference, association, university, you know, in that realm of who's paying to have you speak. For sponsorships, it's going to be an event. It's going to be a live event. It's going to be a summit. Um, it, it's going to be a networking event. So you just kind of change the, the type of event that you're looking for. Um, and where you sponsor tends to be like a one-time event. Those that are doing a keynote, maybe that's a, a an association's annual conference. You know, that might be more of a repetitive event. Right. Okay. I think I could talk to you all day long, but before we go, I understand you have a special gift for the viewers of my YouTube channel. So tell us what it is and tell us how they can get it. Yes. So we were talking about kind of having that set up before, during, and after, you know, and wouldn't it be great if there was a speaker's checklist that kind of told you the things that you should have in place and just not to forget, you know, it's so easy, especially when you are traveling, you know, we're here in the virtual world. So, you know, I'm right here in my office, you know, I can easily put my hands on something I might have forgotten, but if I'm traveling to do a speaking event, you know, good to have a checklist, make sure you've got everything in place and making sure you've got the things in place for the follow-up. So um, we've got a giveaway and that's our speakers need to speak, crush it from the stage checklist. Yay. Yay. <laughs> and then once you get that, it's also going to give you an opportunity to get on my calendar. Um, you know, as we've talked about, there's a lot of personalization to that speaker strategy. Um, and I really want to offer your viewers just a quick call so that I can find out a little bit more about them and give them that one personal tool or tactic or strategy that's going to take them to that next level and really start to get some results, making sure they're on that right pathway. And then we're also going to offer a hundred speaking leads. That are customized to that person. Exactly. Yeah, that's amazing. That's a really fantastic. Exactly. So they can easily follow up and, you know, reach out to speaking opportunities, find the ones on our current speaking checklist. We do a fresh one every single month. And so that way you'll get the latest checklist and you'll get one that's suitable for your type of niche. And we'll send that to you. You can find the opportunities that are attractive to you, that fit your schedule, are in the area that you want to be in, and you can apply for those speaking opportunities. That's such a generous gift. Thank you for sharing that. And basically, in effect, that's almost like getting a free month because in the month membership, you're getting that list, right? Yeah, that's one of our definite biggest perks in our membership. Of course, we've got others, other resources and community builders and support for our speakers. But that is a big part of our membership is getting that speaker leads, that fresh speaker leads list every month, which eliminates a lot of that research and going down the rabbit trails. Right. Yes. So thank you so much. Of so course. tell us again how we can find you. Well, I'm on all the social media channels. You know, you can find me, Danella Burnett. Um, you can also find Speakers Need to Speak, which is our program that serves speakers and provides community and resources. So on Instagram, on Facebook, Speakers Need to Speak. Um, and, you know, take advantage of the giveaway. We'll be connected and 
love to help you take your speaking and your business to that next level. Well, thank you so much, Danella. You have great experience and wisdom, and I appreciate your being willing to share that with us, for sure. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure being here today. Well, I, I know we definitely got value. I definitely got value, too. So before I forget, be sure and subscribe. Share this video with someone you know who might be trying to get speaking gigs as well, and you can contact both of us, and we'll hook you up. Anyway, have a fantastic day. All of you watching, have a fantastic day, and we will catch you in the next one. Bye for now.